In today's video, we will learn five video transitions. Make sure to use them to level up your videos. For the first transition, I opened the clips in CapCut. Now I'll click on the second clip, hold it and drag it to the first layer. This clip should exactly start at the point I want my transition to start. So let's check it. It should be here right when in the first clip. I'm done with speaking and then I need the transition and I'll start speaking in the second clip. When you adjust the place for this clip, right click, copy, again right click and paste. For now, I should deactivate this duplicated clip but later in the video, I will let you know why we made a duplicate of the first clip. Go back to the first clip, go to the remove background tab and click on auto removal. The background has been removed now by adding keyframes. I want my subject, which is me in this video, to enter from right side to the position, which is right now. Speaking of keyframes, if you don't know what a keyframe is, I should generally say that it's a specific point in a video where a change occurs, such as a movement, a scale change, an opacity change, or even color change or filter change. So for this clip, I go back to the basic tab. For the position section, I'll add a keyframe. Then I'll move forward a few frames. Add the second keyframe. Let me expand the timeline a little bit so I can show them easier. Okay, right now I'm at the second position. I will go back to the first one and put the subject out of frame. Let's see the change we made. Great. Hold and drag the playhead at the second keyframe, click on the duplicated clip, right click and activate the clip. Exactly at this position, which is the second keyframe, split the clip and remove the front part. So it means that at the second clip, the background of second clip appears. Let me show you to make it more clear. See? Here which is the second keyframe, the background appears. All right, we are almost done. We need to export this clip. I opened the clip we exported in the previous step in CapCut. I'll drag it to the timeline, move forward a few frames here, right when my transition is start here. Split the clip again move forward a few frames when the transition ends split again now for the clip in between click on it in the basic tab scroll down check the motion blur feature the blur amount is 100 which is okay now for the blend section put it somewhere around 80 85 and for the speed put it on four times or six times Give it some time to be processed. When you apply the motion blur again for the video in between, go to the speed tab and select flash in. Let's see the final result. Export it and let's move on to the second transition. We need two shots like this doing the same thing in different outfits and location or just in two different locations. I opened the clips in CapCut and dragged them into the timeline. Now for the second clip, this one, I'll click on it and drag it to the first layer. Let me expand the timeline a little bit. Now for this clip in the first layer, I need to adjust the timing in a way that my movement 
my same movement in two clips sync let me show you what i mean so first in order to see my movement in two clips i need to reduce the opacity for this one so in the basic tab i'll scroll down open this drop down menu in the blend section and reduce the opacity great now let's sync my movement in the two clips Okay, here I raise my hand. Great, you can see that right now they are almost sync. I will put back the opacity to 100. In the next step, again for the same clip, this one, I'll go to the mask tab, select horizontal. Now what I want to do in this step is by adding keyframes, moving the mask line with my hand movement. Or let's say align the mask line with my hand movement. Pull up the mask line here and add my first keyframe. Again, move forward a few frames, add another keyframe. I still don't need to move the mask line because I cannot see my hand still. Here, add another keyframe and move the mask line a little bit. I will also use this button to make a little bit of blur here to make it more natural. Again, do the same, move forward, add another keyframe and change the mask line. Now it's time to go back from the bottom to the top. Perfect, I added all the keyframes I needed. Now in the last keyframe, when my mask line again went back to the top, I will split the clip here and delete the front part. Let's check the result. Perfect, the last point is that just keep in mind the more keyframes you add, the more precise your transition will be. As always, I imported my clips in CapCut and dragged them to the timeline. This is what we have before the transition. For the third transition, select the first clip, go to the Filters tab, and select the filter you like. For this clip, I will choose Blue Devil, I have it in my favorites, but if you want it, you can either search it here, or scroll down, go to the Stylize, and here again scroll down to find it. There we go. I know this is one of the pro filters, but you can have these transitions using any filters you like. Okay, go back to the favorites. I have selected this one, so I'll drag it to the timeline, extend it to the last frame of my clip. Now I need to put the playhead right at the point I want the transition to start. Let me expand it a little bit. I think here would be okay, so I will cut the filter and delete the front part. This duration, I mean the duration of my filter, would be the first part of my transition. Now I'll click on the filter. In the settings window, I will add a keyframe and lower down the intensity to zero. Again, put the playhead here in the last frame of my clip, my first clip, select on the filter, add another keyframe and put back the intensity to 100. Let's see. Again, I'll drag the same filter for the second clip. Now here, it's exactly the other way around. I should cut the filter right when I want my transition to end. So I think here would be okay. I don't want it to be too long. So split it and delete the front part. 
Again, select the filter, add a keyframe, and put the intensity on zero. Go to the first point of the filter or the first frame of the clip, add another keyframe, and put the intensity on 100. Let's see the final result. Before we learn the force transition, let me show you the raw clips. For the first clip, you should work the same speed as the subject, film them while there are some objects in between that block the views from time to time. Here those objects are the trees. The second clip can be any clips, preferably a scene in which there is a panning shot. A panning shot is a shot with a camera movement from side to side, from the left to the right or the other way around. Be back to the CapCut, I opened the clips and drag them into the timeline. Now click on the second clip and drag it into the first layer. Let's move forward a few frames here when the tree blocks the view. So exactly when that object, whatever it is here is the tree, block the view, your second clip should start. Now for this clip in the first layer, go to the mask tab select horizontal rotate the mask line now i will put the mask line here again move forward a few frames let me expand the timeline so it can be more precise in the start point of this clip i'll add a keyframe again here i'll add the second keyframe and try to put the mask line with the outer line of the tree a little bit of blur again keep continuing moving forward a frame add another keyframe move the mask line force keyframe moving the mask line And for the last one, I will scroll down and put the feather feature to zero. Let's check the result. For the last transition, we need two clips like this and the footage of on and off toggle with the green screen. I open all the clips in CapCut and I will drag them to the timeline. Then I'll drag the second clip to the first layer. In this step, I need to match two clips so that I will make the movement at the same time in two clips. To do so, I will click on the clip in the top layer, go to the basic tab and under the blend option, I open the drop down menu and reduce the opacity. It can help me to match the movement in two clips. I can see that for this clip, in the bottom, I need to scale it up a little bit by selecting and dragging, trying to match the size in two clips. I feel like it is okay now. I need to adjust the timing. I believe right now they are matched in size, in timing and everything. Again, I'll click on the clip on top layer and put the opacity back to 100. In the next step, I will drag the on and off button to the timeline. And for this layer, I will go to the remove background tab, click on the chroma key button and with this color picker, pick the green color. Now adjust the intensity, feather and I'll clean up the edge a little bit. Now it's time to match the toggle movement with my hand movement. As you can see the speed of toggle moving from one side to the other side is lower than the speed of my hand movement. So I will click on it, go to the speed section and speed it up a little bit, like double. Let's see if the speed is matched. Ok, it's good now. The purpose of this transition is to by moving the toggle from on to off. We will have a transition from the first clip to the second clip by changing the blending for the second clip from 0 to 100. Let me show you to make it clear for you. So when I raise my hand here, the toggle appears and then it seems like I'm dragging it to the right side. 
So right at this position here before I move the toggle, I need to add a keyframe for this clip. I'll go to the video tab, basic, and under the blend section, for the opacity, I will add a keyframe and reduce it to zero. Then right when I drag the toggle, I will add the second keyframe and put the opacity back to 100. Let's check it from the beginning. Perfect. Now the last thing I need to do is that for this footage and almost all the same footages like this, as they tend to replay over and over from beginning and I don't need that, when the toggle goes to the right side, I will pause the video and freeze it by clicking on the freeze button. At the end, if you like to make it even more charming, you can add an animation in. 